Hey everybody, how we doing? It's me, Joe Cyrus, back here for the Music Factory Studios. How we doing? I thought this would be an interesting little video to make since I was actually testing some channels to see how close they are to each other and see if I've got any problems with my console. I always thought that this EQ, once I changed consoles, I'm now on the Soundcraft MH2, okay? And I always thought that this console sort of the EQ sounded like a cross between the 88 RS and a 1073 EQ. It's almost like if you took the 88 R and uh, a 1081 from Neve and like crossbred them together, you would get this MH2, MH3 style EQ from Soundcraft. We shouldn't be surprised by that because the guy who built the Soundcraft desk, his name was Graham Blythe. He was an Englishman and this console was built after Soundcraft acquired AMEC. And as we all know, Rupert had his fingerprints all over the AMEC stuff. So that was one of the reasons that I thought this would be a neat little shootout. Also, once I looked at the EQ, on an analyzer i was like oh it is basically that old rupert style eq it's just graham's version of it so basically i'm on the mh2 which is a four band fully sweepable eq so there's no q controls so as we look right here this is the eq going down the channel strip this is the gain has a variable high pass from 30 hertz to 400 that you can either put in the circuit or out of the circuit. Has a high shelf, two mid bands that are set to 1.5 on the Q. It's a big wide Q for the mid range bells. So that's what makes me think of it like a 1081. And then the low end is not necessarily a shelf, but it is a shelf. It's a rounded shelf, which is pretty interesting. It's closer to the AMEC design that you would find in the, the 9000 series from AMEC than really the, the 88R kind of low end, the square shelves. But it has that square shelf top end that you'll find on like an 88R or a VX console or the AMEC or some of those style EQs. So I thought I would compare it to the Universal Audio 88 RS. Here was my issue. I was trying to see how wide the bandwidth was on the console. And so I tested it 192 and I came across this weird anomaly. And I didn't really know this about UAD until really testing this. So I read some of their marketing material, which basically tells me the old shark chips are you know uh pretty old and doing linear phase oversampling on these shark chips is impossible to really replicate correctly over 48k now i've read their marketing material which says they don't like to process anything above 20k or 22 and a half k or 24 you know just silly nonsense stuff but uh I've always thought it was just a limitation of the chips, which is understandable. Okay. Those chips are 20 years old. Problem was this anomaly kept popping up in the new native plugins. And it's like, why are they doing this? Well, we don't want to process anything above 24 K. Well, that's just idiotic. <laughs> okay. You get what you pay for, but unbeknownst to that they still sound good it's just let me be able to turn it off and on especially in the native ones okay i'll get off my little soapbox rant here so i basically tried to replicate the same eq curves okay we'll take a look at it here with the eq curve analyzer this is the mh2 okay that's 10 hertz at the bottom 48 at the top i'll turn the eq off hold on just a second Okay, there's the EQ out and you can see it starts to roll off around 35k and it's down 3 dB at 40k I tested at 192 that I get the same curve basically it's just a little bit rougher right here because 
it goes up just a little further than than Nyquist at 96k yes I'm doing this at 96k for a reason I want to show this because this is the full bandwidth of the console 24k would be about right here so we would lose all of those harmonics you know that come from the mic preamp the line input whatever the EQ and so on so as you can see this is the bandwidth of the console when I use this dry wet and go to zero nothing's going through the console now we'll go through the 88R flat no EQ as you can see there's a roll off at 22k now there's not an 88RS on planet earth that is in working condition that rolls off at 22 and a half K there's just not I can promise you that if you have like one of the 8801 or whatever the EQs are called or the full channel strip and you test it it's not gonna roll off till about 80 K okay if you have anything from Rupert Neve designs which I know is a completely different company but Rupert if you go watch his video on wide bandwidth on the Rupert Neve channel you'll kind of be shocked at how far up they actually want to go and the reason why it's not because they just want to have the widest bandwidth they went to the air Maserat console and there was a problem at like 53 K I think was where it was at Rupert thought that it they were you know making a joke like they can't really be serious that they hear a problem at 53 K that's impossible so he went there to appease them because, well, that console costed, you know, $400,000 or whatever. And he gets there and, oh, what is the, the, the producer's name? Um, Jeff Emmerich. Jeff Emmerich's like, let me show you. And starts to do a playback in the era of tape. And tells Rupert how to hear this anomaly because you're not going to hear it at 53K. You're going to hear the problems on down the line and Rupert heard it and from that point on he wanted wide bandwidth to be a thing so they basically anything from Rupert Neve designs is going to roll off about 10 Hertz and it's going to be flat up to at least 80 K well with a lot of the AMS Neve stuff it's the same unless it's digital products like you know the RMS uh, you know RMX 16 or whatever or the AMS RMX 16 reverb or, or something of that nature it's going to have bandwidth up to about 80k and then it's going to roll off slightly yeah some roll off at about 70 but you got to remember this console is not anywhere near the level of something like an 88rs or an amec or any of that stuff this console was very expensive in its day it was about forty thousand dollars new okay but and it is a 2000 and I want to say three or four model something like that 2003 or 2004 and this was a nice console I bought it this was the monitoring console and I had an MH4 as a front of house console when we would do live sound gigs when my Midas console died after the flood that we had I put this console in because well I had it and I didn't want to buy a new one to be honest with you because I don't want to spend a hundred thousand dollars on a console because well that's just crazy in this day and time so I had this console why not use it I basically just use consoles for tracking so what I was wanting to talk about is the bandwidth difference that you'll see here okay here's the bandwidth of the console you can see the noise now I do have it turned back up 6 dB and the reason is the way I have my my converters is I have them turned down 6 dB just to not clip them that way I can bring this back in 6 dB and it be exactly the same in and out volume wise so you can see the little roll off at around 40 ish K we put the EQ back in okay now it has those square shelves that you would see on an AMEC or something like an 88RS okay so when this is at zero the console is completely out of the circuit when this red lights on it will be the UAD Neve 88RS okay let me mute my microphone and we'll do a playthrough I've got a, a little drum 
loop here that we'll use. Let me mute my microphone so we don't get any uh, backsplash of audio into the video recording. All right. We'll do one of the completely clean, and then we'll go back and forth between the console and the 88RS. So as you can hear, Universal Audio did a really good job on their plugin. You know, it sounds as good as you could expect from something like this. Now, something I want to point out here really, really quickly. I'm going to open Span. You see the noise from the console there. You go, God, that's a lot of noise. Not really. That's 96. I've got this thing rolled all the way down to 180. I think that's where it's at. So this noise is at like minus 94. Okay. Now, if we're the the red line here is 48k, which is the full bandwidth of 96k sampling rate. So I'm gonna let you look at the analyzer now, and I'll show you why this roll off from UAD is kind of a problem. This is why I use the old 88RS plugin most of the time. It actually has full bandwidth. It doesn't have the same problem. I'll show you here. So let's go grab the old 88R. Leave 88 RS Legacy. Where you at, buddy? There we go. Okay. Sorry about the pops. That's part of the, uh, the, the bandwidth thing here. For the analyzer. Okay. Now, if I come over here and you can see, even with the EQ in and out, you got full bandwidth on the old 88RS plugin compared to the new one which rolls off at 24k it's it's simply because they use linear phase oversampling in these new plugins i just wish they'd allow us either do the full bandwidth on the native plugins because there's no reason to do this with the native plugins it's it's silly or allow us to you know turn it off that would be great it won't sound bad i promise because this one sounds actually just as good to be honest with you so let's set this one too and we'll include it in our new test okay so okay i see where we're at i think we're pretty close right there let's see yep Okay. Come down just a buzz. All right, that looks pretty fair. Yep. That's coming off. Hold on a second here, just to double check. Here's our console. And as you can see, the console rolls off in the low end at about 15 hertz, which is normal. If I put the high pass filter in, you'll really see it roll off. It's set all the way to 30 hertz, but I'm going to reach up and click it on the high pass so you can see where it actually starts. That's with the high pass at 30 hertz. And there's it out of the circuit. So 
it's more of a rounded low shelf because if you move the low shelf on this console it basically just gets a wider sort of bell shape like you normally see here all right but this time we're going to check it out with span i've just got the oxford limiter on here doing literally nothing just so we don't actually overload the video recording so this is having no effect there's nothing on it's just everything set to zero just so there won't be any uh clipping distortion all right you see this red line this is full bandwidth this red line is and you'll see the difference pretty much immediately i'll mute my microphone now and we'll take another listen here really quick And as you can see, even with this virtual instrument, there is information far above 20K. Now, we can have a debate on whether whatever, whether you like that, don't care, doesn't matter to you, whatever. It's there. That's all I'm saying, okay? These UAD plugins, they do sound good, okay? I'm not I'm not hating on this this, you know, UAD plugin. I get a lot of sessions sent to me that are 48K. And I'll use a lot of the UAD stuff, but if it's not, and it doesn't have a mix control, I really won't use it on a 96K session, simply because it's just too much of a pain. And you say, are all those plugins like that? Not all. There are some that are full bandwidth, okay? But they're more rare than normal. So you have like the old 88RS is full bandwidth, more of the legacy plugins are full bandwidth, but as far as the native ones go, as far as I know, the only full bandwidth ones are the LA3A, the DBX160 is full bandwidth. Yep. And I think that's it. As far as I, I mean, the full techs aren't, the Studer isn't. Um, the LA2As aren't you see you can see it there there's the LA2 and these are the native ones these aren't the BSP ones right, the new Fairchild isn't so we'll go with the new Fairchild isn't okay it rolls off but the old Fairchild is full bandwidth so if you want the legacy one it's full bandwidth, you know, so there's that, <laughs> but you lose a lot of low end with the old one. So it just, you have to test these things out. It's like the 33609, right? This is a DSP only um, compressor, but the SE version is full bandwidth, while the full version, the C here, is rolled off again so be mindful of that but basically this test was just to see if we liked the console as good as we like you know console flavored plugins and i'll just be honest with you i do like the cq i don't want to use it for mixing but just trying to learn my gear you know and i was testing to see if there was a big difference between channels actually those channels are those two channels are really close i've only got one channel that's kind of off a little bit out of all these and this console is uh, about 20 years old now so that's a good thing 
and I'm using the internal power supply. So that's great to see. All right, guys and gals, I hope I didn't I hope I didn't bore you to death, and I hope you found this sort of interesting. If you have any questions, post them in the comments, and you know, we'll have a little bit of a discussion. All right, guys and gals, we'll see you next time. Have a great day, y'all.